Now coming to the second one, that is this a term, a term called, first I will explain what is this, risk weighted asset, understand this concept, very, very, very important, okay, risk weighted asset, risk weighted asset, okay, understand the meaning of what do you mean by risk weighted asset. Now, for, what are assets for a bank, we know what are liabilities for a bank, what are the liabilities for a bank, deposits, okay. What are the assets for a bank? Banks loan. Banks loan are assets. If a bank is give, why? Assets gives income to the bank. Loans are only giving income. Okay. So here the asset is what? Asset is loan. Now each loan. Okay. Bank is giving loan. Different types of loan. Housing loan. Agricultural loan. SME means small enterprises loan or MSME loan. Okay, real estate loan, commercial vehicle loan, business loan, etc. Different types of loan is there. And, and then loan to the government also. Okay, so what RBI will do? RBI will fix a risk weight. RBI will fix a risk weight to each sector. For RBI will say that for government, that is for government securities, risk weight is zero. This is RBI set, okay. Because there will look government securities there will be no default because RB itself managing the government securities. Government securities risk weight is zero. Gold, I am just for your understanding, gold the risk weight is 150, risk weight is very high. Real estate, risk weight is 125. So for each sector, for each sector RBI will assign a risk weight. So so what you need to do is to the loan amount to the loan amount you have to multiply the risk weight what is this risk weight asset risk weight asset is each asset is having a each asset is having a risk weight okay so and this risk weight it this risk weight will be for example real estate loan real estate the total real estate loan given by the Total real estate loan given by the bank is, imagine 1000 crore. The total, total loan. So, to this 1000 crore, multiply the risk weight. For example, the risk weight for real estate is 0.125%, okay, 0.125. So, there is a risk weight is there. Or, okay, so there is a risk weight. Into So, you will get the risk weight. So, how much? This is the risk weight asset of risk weight asset of from the real estate from the gold how much loan into the risk weight for the government securities the risk weight will be zero no problem gold no problem okay so are you clear with the risk weighted asset now I am going to explain a ratio what is called as capital to risk weighted asset ratio capital in the numerator risk weighted asset in the denominator. We know what is risk weighted asset. Okay. Now, this capital, which when we talk from the banking capital, okay, banks, the capital which we are talking are the, the see, it is, see, capital are basically money. Okay. But the capital which we are talking here are those money not used by the bank. Means the, the fund which have not been used for any other purposes. Okay. The fund which the, the bank have kept something like a reserve okay in the form of it can be in different form equity shares etc okay when i'll discuss the different types of capital i'll discuss in the capital market okay so the the capital which have not given for the money the bank is having and which are not given as loan you get the point this capital are those capital see when you give loan bank when it gives a loan it becomes an asset Okay, so the capital which I am talking here in the numerator is, is that money the bank have not used for any other purposes, especially lending purposes. It is kept as like an ideal money or as a reserve or been invested somewhere. Okay, so what is the, then, then capital to CRAR, capital to risk weighted asset ratio. Now, now what RBI will do is, RBI will fix, RBI will say that the capital to risk weighted asset for every bank, for every bank, 
for every bank, capital to risk weight asset ratio has to be 9 percentage. RBI is saying that all Indian commercial banks, all Indian commercial banks should have a capital to, so it's fixed. If you go below, you will be put under certain list, black list. RBI has many lists. One is PCA, Prompt Corrective Action List. Okay, we'll discuss. We'll discuss. Everything we'll be discussing. Okay. So it is not good if a bank comes under that list. It is not good. It will create a bad impression about the bank. So, in order to comply with this ratio, in order to comply with the ratio, RBI is saying that every bank should have a capital risk weighted asset ratio. Another short form of Capital risk weighted asset ratios, capital education ratio, both having same meaning. Okay. Another name for it is also called as capital education ratio. Same. So what RBA is saying that so in order to mention in order to nine percentage and more, more nine percentage, minimum nine or more than it, capital education ratio. Now for a bank. For a bank, for a bank to maintain, to maintain a capital adequacy ratio of, see, having, so there are two options. One, increase the numerator or decrease the denominator. Increasing the numerator is not a good thing for a bank. Why? It's basically, you cannot, it, that capital can't be used for lending. Okay, so numerate it capital has to be there, a minimum capital has to be there. Okay. So so that this capital can absorb any losses. If any loan, if, if a bank's few loans go default, become bad loan, this capital can be used. This capital can be used to cover that losses. Okay. Now then the what the bank will do? Bank will try to reduce the denominator. If they want to reduce the denominator. What is the option for them? What is risk weighted asset? Means each loan. So there are one option. Give maximum loan to government securities. Because government securities don't have any risk weight. Zero. Or give loan to those sector where there is. Means where RBI has given less risk. Who, give, who assigned risk weight? RBI. So RBI depending upon the need of the economy. Put, will change the risk weight. Okay, so in order to comply with the capital adequacy ratio, what bank will do? Two options. Bank will always try to maintain the risk weight asset in, in that level so that our bank will ensure that, okay, bank will not give high risky sector loan. Because if the bank gives high sector risky loan, suddenly this number will, this weight asset will increase and it will break, breach the capital adequacy ratio. It will go down. So what, so by coming up with a risk weighted asset and coming up with this concept of capital education ratio, RBI can ensure that certain sector will not get loan beyond a certain limit. So this is the purpose of capital advocacy ratio. The main purpose is to ensure that bank don't go for risky lending beyond a limit. Bank don't go for risky lending beyond a limit. Okay. So by doing so, we can, uh, RBA can control. Now, now have this an idea, okay, this concept of uh, capital education ratio have originated from a, a central bank bank, central bank bank, RBA is a central bank. So, there is a bank called Basel, Bank for International Settlement, Basel, okay, Bank for International Settle, Settlement, which is, which is set up in a place called Basel, Switzerland, okay. Bank for International Settlement, Bank for International Settlement, located in Basel, located in Basel and what is the speciality of this bank is that uh, the members are central bank, only central bank will be members. So this Bank for International Settlement have come up with a norm what is called as Basel norm. So one of the most important norm of Basel norm is that every, every bank, every bank in the world should have a minimum capital 
adequacy ratio. According to Basel 3, see Basel have come with 3 norms, Basel 1, Basel 2, current norm is Basel 3 norm. Basel I will discuss in detail, okay, in the coming classes. Okay, so in the Basel 3 norm, uh, this base, uh, this band for international settlement have said that all the banks should have a, a minimum capital adequacy ratio of 8 percentage. But RBI increased that capital adequacy ratio to 9 percentage. For Indian banks, see RBI decide for Indian, Basel de generally determine for the, so respective central bank can decide whether to increase it or to maintain the, what has been suggested by Basel norm. Okay, so they cannot reduce it. So RBI made it a stringent, more stringent. Okay, what Basel norm suggested? 8 percentage. What RBI is implementing in India? 9 percentage. Okay, so this is the concept. Okay, so basically the aim of this capital adequacy ratio is that in case if any loan fails, that is if any loan, if any customer default, if continuously, they have, you have seen that many customer defaulting now. We have seen 40,000 crore loan has been defaulting. 20,000 crore being defaulting. In that case, this capital which has been kept can be used to absorb the absorb the loss. So, this is the basic aim of the capital adequacy ratio that it will help the bank to offset any losses. Basically, this fund, this capital has to be mainly on funds, banks own fund which is not being used for any other purposes. Okay, it's a very important concept. Okay, you will come across and we will discuss this again in the Basel norm, but capital adequacy ratio, okay, don't get confused, okay, capital adequacy ratio, another name for capital adequacy ratio is capital to risk weighted asset ratio. It will ensure that every bank will have a minimum capital or every bank should be having an adequate capital to deal with any unforeseen emergency or contingency, okay. So, this is a concept, this is a way, one of the method through which RBI ensure qualitative credit control also. Now, this was the question being asked in 2018 regarding capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio is the amount that the banks have to maintain in the form of their own funds to offset any loss that bank incur if the account holders fail to repay dues. Is it correct? It's a correct statement. What about the second statement? It is decided by each individual bank. In India, it is decided by RBA. So only one is correct.